Well, and just very briefly, just uh, number one for the record, of course, to the appellant, there's no one else here today, so we're not going to reserve any time. You have no one to rebut. No, but you have your full 15 minutes. Thank uh, you. Secondly, our arguments are being recorded. Make sure you introduce yourself when you start to speak. Uh, stay behind the podium so the video can pick you up, and please uh, speak loud enough for that to hear you. I don't think in this case you have any children or victim to refer to, I but if you were, please refer to them by initial. Thank you so much. And you may proceed when you are ready. Thank you, Your Honor. My name is Leslie Bransky. I'm here on behalf of Joseph Gorski. I'm here because the trial court erred in many ways in calculating child support in this case. First and foremost, just on the most simplest of bases, it calculated child support based upon the concept that mother was the custodial parent. This court is long past the presumption that mothers are the custodian and that's the only one who matters. Moreover, the shared parenting plan in this matter reflects that for one child, there are 183 days with father and for the mother, 182, and it flips for the other child. So clearly, there is an extra day for both of the parents. And this was done in negotiation and for many reasons, including tax filings, et cetera, et cetera. But it's clear that both of these parents should be treated equally in the calculation of child support. I don't own the, the court program, so I go to the courthouse every time I do a child support calculation and intentionally use the program that the court uses. The exhibits in this matter will demonstrate that the court's version of the child support calculation, by giving mother the presumption of custody, deprived father of any credit for his child, child care costs. He has substantial child care costs because he doesn't work at the same school where the children attend. So on his days, when he is working days, he has a shifting schedule, but very often works days, he must take the children to a daycare provider who will then get the children to school. That has an expense. The child support worksheet designed by the legislature does not give you credit for your entire cost. It considers the tax benefit you receive as a result of claiming child care costs. And that means that he should have been credited with $1,300. Because the child support made its erroneous assumption, he was only credited with, I believe, $900 and mother was credited with $700. It may be reversed. I, I believe that he had the slightly higher employment income. So well, the, in your position that the court should have utilized split custody uh, guideline in this case and did not, or? Well, it's not actually a split custody allocation. The program allows you to put how many days each parent has. And that, were, that was the basis of exhibits A, B, C, and D, is that each parent had one child for 183 days and the other for 182. It's not a split custody calculation. However, it's important because the allocation of, of the child care costs is followed by assuming it was mother. I guess I should have, had I realized what the court would do, done a child support calculation with the presumption that father was the custodian. But that's not appropriate either because they're both custodians. I thought the argument you were making is that the amount to live rent free as a trustee should be imputed into the income. I'm sorry. I, the, the I'm going to turn on my hearing aid louder. I thought that... Our, if you get yeah, if it helps, please. We're, we're, oh, do you want the, the amount, it, the amounts are wrong. Isn't that what you're arguing? That well, there's two arguments. Okay. So One is, if you just assume that she makes 35 and he makes 55, mm -hmm. it's wrong because it didn't give him credit for the child care costs. Mm -hmm. So it's just flat out wrong. So then, she has the advantage 
of a $2,000 a month benefit for living in a house in Hudson with no rent, and actually with no utilities, but we didn't put that on the record, so no rent. No the, rent, and she's the trustee of a trust in the house's trust property. That's it is. Okay, it is. And the magistrate specifically acknowledged that she lived there for free, and that was fair and equitable. Okay, it's fair and equitable. That's a good fee for running the trust for your mother and taking care of her. I have no issue with that. However, it is either income to her, and that is the income from the trust, which I wouldn't have called trust income, but it's something. Would a fee for being a trustee be taxable as income? It would have been. Yeah. And this is tax free. So it's yet another advantage to mother. Um, moreover, the parties lived in that same situation for eight years prior to the divorce being filed. So this is not new business. It's not something that can't be repeated. This is how the trust works. It lets mom live there rent free. Um, so there's a couple of different ways to look at that. For one thing, you could say she has $24,000 of additional income. And I ran a child support calculation with that. And if mom has $59,000 of income and dad has fifty-five, dollars then mother's mother has an obligation to dad. And that is on the second to last page of the exhibit. Is $68.94. Okay? If we just round it down and say they have equal income, because she doesn't have any child support, child support, sorry, child care obligation, and he does. She pays him less money, but she still would pay him something. She would pay him $29.17. If you do it accurately, she pays him. He does not pay her $485 a month. And that's significant <clears throat> because he's living in a townhouse with two bedrooms, which means that the opposite sex children are sharing a room. Guardian didn't have any trouble with it at their current age, but he suggested that that's something fathers should work on. Well, how does he work on that when he's paying almost $500 a month to mother, who has free lodging for a home where everyone has their own room and there's acreage? It's just not an, a result that is in the best interest of these minor children. Nobody wants to take away the benefits they have in their mother's home, but they have a right to have a nice home with their mother as well. It's, they argued at trial that this shouldn't be considered because you don't consider base uh, quarters allotments. Well, you do. The statute says you do consider that. They said it's not income. Well. The Supreme Court has said when you don't have to buy something because it's provided by your employer, and it's her mother, the trust, her employer, who's giving her free lodging, it's something she doesn't have to pay for because it's provided by someone. The only fair result here is to allocate to mother the entire $24,000 a year of benefit and calculate child support with each parent being custodian particularly since he's the only one who has the daycare expense, and he's the only one who lost with the trial court's miscalculation. I would be happy to answer any further questions. But I have some procedural questions. Yes, sir. Um, this was, as I recall, a decision, a decision by the magistrate regarding child support, and everything else had been agreed on basically in your case. Is that it fair? Is true, your Honor. Uh, and then it was adopted the same day the magistrate makes that decision, it's all wrapped up in the trial court's entry. And you saw me fairly recently on a similar case where the litigants go into court thinking that the magistrate's going to make a decision and then you could make an objection to the court, and that was taken away, right. and it was taken away here as well. So in this case, you did not object, obviously, to the magistrate's decision. 
because it wasn't a magistrate's decision. The only thing that was issued was a final judgment entry decree of divorce. In, in looking through the file, I could see nothing on the magistrate of the court's decision with the typical language from 53 indicating you have the right to object to that decision within 14 days. So is there anything in the record that included that you had the right to make that objection? No, Your Honor. Any other questions from the panel? If you'd like to conclude, please read for yourself. No, thank you. On many levels, this calculation was just wrong. It deprived the father of credit for the daycare he has to provide, because he doesn't just get up in the morning, get dressed, pick up the children, and go directly to work with them. It fails to give him any credit for having to pay for lodging, where he's being urged to provide lodging for two bedrooms for the two children, in addition to his own. It does not provide for mother's substantial benefit. A home in Hudson with acreage, it's not just a townhouse in Stowe near the kids' school. It's just not beneficial to these children to have one good house and one house where they live with dad half the time. Counsel, regarding the child care credit, you're not saying that they didn't plug that $3,000 into the child support worksheet, right? It is plugged in. What you're saying is it's because of the disparity of income. No. Okay, go ahead. I'm sorry. I just want to make sure I understand the argument. No. If you look at the court's child support worksheet, because it assumed that mother is the custodian, it allocates that, and it starts out at $3,000. The algorithm designed by the state takes you down to $1,300 on a sole calculation. Okay, I think I understand. I just wanted to make sure. Yeah. So it's the designation of mom, or I'm sorry, the designation of father as obligor. It is in section 21, and it's at line I. Instead of giving him credit even for that $1,300, it gives him credit for $700. This is even better. It gives him credit for $700. Well, $900. Gives her credit for $700 and him credit for $900. But that's not the correct child support worksheet, even if you just assume that both of them are custodial. She's got $24,000 a year. He does not. He's being urged to start looking for housing with three bedrooms when he's paying child support to the person who has the big cushy house with the acreage. It's not in the children's best interest to have to live at a low standard of living with one parent and a high standard of living with the other. He's not asking for his $30 or $70 from mom. He's asking not to go out of pocket, which is only fair and in the best interest of these children, so he can get the housing that the guardian ad litem recommended in the near term. If there are no further questions, I would say thank you and ask you please to reverse this. Actually, I'd like you to enter the appropriate judgment, but I suspect that this being a first appeal, that's not going to happen. But I would ask that you reverse this and remand it to the trial court for proceedings commensurate with this court's decision. Thank you. Thank you. On behalf of the court, I'd like to thank you for your presentation today. The court will take the matter under advisement and issue a decision in due course. That the clerk of court will mail a copy of that decision to you upon the day of judgment and also be available on the high Supreme Court website. With that, the court is now adjourned until 9 a.m. tomorrow morning.